Today we need to get into sugar fans being protested online and what happened with that. We need to talk about sugar being believed to be making a new label when he leaves the military and then a leaving BTS rumor. And then we have Jungkook's song, Hate You. So, hey dumplings, this is Dave Diss. I hate it or not. Make sure you subscribe with the notification bell on. Grab your dumpling. It's Hey Splink Mug Merch. Let's go. We need to talk about Jungkook's song, Hate You. Hype just released Jungkook's visualizer and people are going crazy. The song, if you are not aware, is definitely a ballad and a song that isn't as widely made. People like to sing about what their exes did wrong, but rarely a song about what they might have done wrong. But actually, the ex was amazing. And these are what the lyrics of Hate You are about. Of course, Jungkook didn't write these lyrics, so it's up to question whether he feels these particular words relate to him. However, these songs would generally be well accepted within in Western market, and I think that's where it'll stay, as we rarely see idols sing about love in a profound way like this in Korea, because dating and love are extremely taboo there. People were definitely breaking down the visuals for this song, and I do want to post my live first time reaction to the video over on Patreon, so if you're interested in checking that out and joining other dumplings in reacting with me, then please go over to Patreon. There's many issues with copyright on the channel, but since Patreon is not a publicly open platform, I can upload the reactions there without any penalty to the channel. I'll link that in the description below. But anyway, the visuals for this song are absolutely stunning. It takes place with Jungkook just on the rooftop and he is just singing into the camera. And we see the beautiful city lights behind him and we see Jungkook slowly starting to tear up by the end of the music video, which is the payoff. People were drawing inspiration from this video to be the same as the Euphoria music video. And then people were drawing contrasts from Euphoria and how that song is very happy and how Hate You is actually very dark. And then people just say cinematically the shots look very similar. And I definitely agree. There likely was some inspiration there. The payoff in Euphoria music video seems to be death. So it seemed like Jungkook jumped off the rooftop, which changed the meaning of the song. It changed it to make it appear like he is singing about a euphoric land or death. Of course, then the bridge of Euphoria would counter that theory. However, in Korea, you can't blatantly sing about suicide and especially not in a way where you might be happy to do it. So that could be a reason to add that verse in there. In that case, I actually see the two to be very similar and not a contrast of each other, which was another point that was brought up, them being a contrast. People were definitely getting emotional after seeing Jungkook getting emotional and crying during the video. It made people wonder if he was in love or whatever it was, but I don't think Jungkook necessarily relates to any of these lyrics. I think he may understand and the lyrics might even be translated for him to understand, but that doesn't mean he relates. He probably just thinks that it's a topic that a lot of people would relate to. I think that's hard for people to wrap their head around, that not everything they see or hear is a direct reflection of the person they see in front of them. I don't know if Jungkook has ever claimed that those lyrics relate to him, they could, but if they didn't, it's also showbiz. And I say this in a genuine way with no hate, that sometimes in order to create this fantasy for people, they might say what they have to say. This is a very common practice. It would be a very different story if Jungkook didn't relate to the music and during every interview talked about how much he hates the album. No one would buy it. For example, I also, in most people's minds, probably just live in front of this wall, but that is not the reality. And I do this because I'm actually a really messy person and you don't want to see my room. People don't want to ignore acknowledge this because they think the members are supposed to be relatable and fun. And their personalities and life struggles could be similar, but in most ways, we don't relate. And I think that is important to remember. We don't all have an army of followers every time we do or create something that the army will make it successful. For example, Suchita with Suga hosting it is definitely a very successful show. And many people are happy that once Suga finishes his enlistment, he may come back and actually continue the show or do more. However, people were a little upset when apparently they noticed that the views were not as high as they expected for the show, and then continue to blame the rest of the fandom for not supporting the show. The show gets a minimum of 1 million views, which is just an insane amount for a talk show online. Usually they don't hit this much, so I was very surprised that there was even an objection to it. People were going on big accounts and urging more fans to support, however this is not the right way to support it. A lot of armies are just into the music, and not necessarily interviews. In a lot of the episodes, we don't even have BTS members in them. Them. So it makes sense why a lot less people would watch, but it's still quite a bit. This is another situation where I feel like the fandom is obsessed with numbers because they take the numbers almost personally. If Sugar is my fave and he fails, that means I have failed. And I don't know where this comes from because BTS has never mentioned, oh, since we got less views, armies have failed us. You should be watching or streaming things because you enjoy them. 
them. It irks me to no end when I see someone who sits there and streams for hours but has no idea what the message of the song is. Because that's how I got into BTS, through translating their lyrics and seeing how meaningful they were. And then also seeing how talented they are. So it makes me genuinely confused when I see people mass streaming and mass buying without actually knowing what the song or album means. Like do those people even relate to the music? Of course there's a lot of people that do but there's a lot of people that don't. And I don't like that. Of course I feel the same way asking more people to stream or watch Suchita if they have no interest. However I think the show is already doing fantastic. I think the show is great even if it had lower views and people who watched it were just like the true armies because there ended up being a lot of media attention around certain things that Suga might say in the show and a lot of sometimes gets taken out of context. So what happened? During an episode apparently Suga talked about wanting to start his own hip-hop label. He said this in passing and really didn't talk about official plans and when he was going to specifically carry this out. He mentioned it would be after enlistment which is obvious because he can't really do much if he's enlisted but this sparked some rumors that Suga is leaving BTS or leaving HYBE which would in turn have him leave the group too. People hear that he would start his own label and then their mind tends to wander. However the way the industry can work is a bit different than you think. Suga would and could still be a part of BTS and HYBE just because he starts his own label doesn't mean that he will be a part of that label. That label is just something that would be under his control. So one of the examples I can use is if you're a shop owner and sells cupcakes and then on your own time you also have a candle selling business. You love doing both. It doesn't mean you'll leave your cupcake business to do candles. You're just working on both. And if Suga does have his hip hop label, he would likely work on that when he is not working on BTS. He probably wouldn't join his label or only use his label when he is releasing Augusti music. His goal here is to likely sign on new talent and keep the talent going, keep his legacy going, and keep doing things that will impact the world long after his career is over and his life is over. It's very important for anyone in entertainment to always be trying to diversify and do new things. And things that will live on well past the fame of whatever they're famous for. Because the fame will end at a certain point and by this I don't mean that the artist will be forgotten, not talked about, or whatever. No, they'll still be remembered for their impact and everything. However, they might not have the same spotlight online and they might not be selling as much as they normally might have during their peak. Media and news coverage also tends to stop covering an artist after a certain age. You see artists like the Rolling Stones still selling out huge concert venues but they're not being reported on the news as much because those headlines are taken by the new younger artists. And so yes, they can still sell out stadiums but they might not sell out, out as much as before due to less exposure. So basically they're not getting new fans. They're only selling out to existing fans. Sugar might be working towards that new label but as of right now we do not have confirmation if he has actually filed or registered a business name for a label. And we do not know if he is actually going to do it or if he's just a thought that he wanted to share with us. Let me know what you think. Make sure you check out Patreon for more videos. Link down below. Thanks for this lovely comment right here. Love you. Bye.